welcome to the YMCA of San Francisco's Classrooms for All. My name is Risha, and today we are exploring how nature is everywhere. For this activity, you can use anything in your home that reminds you of something growing. I've assembled some things from the refrigerator in the pantry, some food that I like, some food that's in season, some food that I got at the grocery store, you can even use something that you're cooking, like some applesauce that I've started here by cutting up apples. And once you have your, your food, you can also get some egg cartons that are empty, some paper. I have some scrap paper here that instead of putting it into the recycling, I'm gonna use it. Um, you might want some tape, some glue, some colored pencils and a pencil sharpener, something to collect your pencil shavings. I have an old tea box here, and some markers or other materials that you like to make art with. I also have some envelopes, and I have some stamps, because we're going to be learning how to send a thank you note. Okay, fabulous friends, let's get started. When we remember that nature is everywhere, it helps us practice our gratitude, because we can appreciate how that nature is nourishing us and how we are part of that system. That's why I like to start with food. Food is an excellent example of nature that is nourishing and sustains us and can remind us to practice our gratitude. For example, this winter squash is in season and I was able to watch it grow from being a tiny seed to being a small plant to being a flourishing plant that produced food. We also have apples here. I was able to grow these apples on a tree and harvest them. You can see some of the leaves from where I picked this apple. When we cut open the apple, we can see the blueprint of the flower that this apple grew from on the tree. The seeds inside remind us that this started so, so small and has grown into something big. What a great reminder for us to ask ourselves, what am I growing? What am I practicing? What's something small that I'm doing every day to help me towards a bigger goal? I also have here an avocado, delicious. An avocado is something that also grows in a tree like this apple. And it's something that can grow locally and in season. This is the time of year when the avocado trees are ripening their fruits. Also have a lemon here, something else that's in season, growing on a tree. I can get this locally here in the Bay Area. What a great reminder to use all of our senses. We can use our sense of sight, our sense of smell, our sense of touch, mm, to feel the weight and texture, mm, our sense of hearing, and even our sense of taste. Mmm, I love to eat and explore my sense of taste. What's something you like to taste? I also have these bananas here as a reminder of something that I like to taste, but something that doesn't grow locally in this area. Mmm. And if you're somebody who's looking to minimize the carbon footprint of your food, you can consider minimizing the foods that come from far away and redirecting your food budget to foods that are in season and um, nutritional and local as well. Okay, you might notice during this time together, I've had something in the background. This is actually a map of San Francisco and this map 
was created in 1987. There's information on this map that tells us more about who created it, the name of the area, the directionality with the compass, the compass road up here, and there's lots of other labels as well. But this map is not the whole story about this area. In fact, this map might remind us of some of the people or animals or land features that are left out of this story. Because this is only a story from one person's perspective in the year 1987. The Bay Area is home to a rich history of different people, different plants, different animals. And I wanna encourage everyone here to think about who came before the folks who made this map. And I'm talking about not only the people who lived in your home before you lived there, but I'm talking about the entirety of the history of the Bay Area. Now I'm somebody that moved here a few years ago, so this has only been my home for a few years, but there are indigenous and native people who have called this area home for thousands of years. And I wanna encourage everyone here to do some research to find out more about that. I feel that as somebody who is not from that group, I'm somebody who identifies as white. It's not my place to tell that story in its entirety, but it is my place to remind everyone here to explore with the same curiosity that we explore nature, to think about how we're all connected and how our stories overlap when we think about our space. So the next time you're walking down the street, I want you to notice the direction Where's the sun on what side of you? What's the name of the street? Who gave it that name? How long is the street? Where are the boundaries? These are the kinds of things that come together from a long history of different things happening in the same space. Mm. So that brings us back to our activity today. When we think about our gratitude, how these things come together. How are different people coming together in your home to help you succeed, to help you flourish and be nourished? So we're gonna be doing a few different activities. One is map making. You can actually make a map of your home or your neighborhood the same way that there's a map here. This is a map of the garden where I work. I've drawn the outline of the space. I've drawn some of the features in it, like the raised beds or a different section or where the chickens live. On your map, you might label the shape of the rooms in your home. You might label where different things happen, where we eat, where we sleep. You might label the direction that the sun comes up, which window is it shining through, where are the house plants in your home. You might do a scavenger hunt in your home to find evidence of nature inside. Where do the spider webs live? Where do the foods in your home spend the most time? Is there anything growing that you can mark on your map? Hmm. The great thing about this is that you can keep adding to it. This is a map that I drew. <laughs> it's so big. I took this piece of paper, I put it on top of this map and I traced a big outline. And then I labeled it with the names of the neighborhoods, not the names of the roads. I also put geographical features like Mount Sutro or Golden Gate Park. And I also started labeling where my friends live. Those are important things to me when I look at a map. What about you? Maybe if you draw a map of your neighborhood, you'll also put the places that you love, the places where you notice a special tree or the places where you start to see dogs that are friendly, 
or a place with a special bench where you like to sit, this map can be a great way to connect to your space. You can also use your map for safety. Maybe you and your family can have a meeting about where you should meet in case, for example, there's a reason to get out of the house quickly. I know some people lately have been thinking about fire safety. Maybe you've talked to your family about earthquake safety. As we start to remember how nature is everywhere and the ways that we're impacted by nature, we can use our drawings of our own space to help us clearly understand the way that we can work together. Maybe you have a special meeting spot in case of emergencies, like the bench across the street or the front step. Okay, we've talked about map making. We've talked about how boundaries can be informed by someone's specific worldview and about what's important to them. We've talked about how you can put the direction of orientation on your map. We've talked about labeling, and we've talked about how we can keep adding detail. We can notice, we can wonder, and we can be reminded to keep adding more as we make our observations. So let's talk about our next activity. We have our egg cartons here. Maybe you've taken the time to notice how many little sections are in your egg carton. Maybe you've taken the time to notice what material your egg carton is made of. I have two here. One is made of plastic and one is made of a type of cardboard texture. Many of these can be recycled, but if we want to think about the ways that we're connected to nature in our own home, we want to reduce and reuse our materials before we recycle them. So I have here an empty egg carton. How can I reduce the number of egg cartons I bring into my home? Well, if I'm buying eggs from somebody who can refill my egg carton, that's one way I can reduce the number of egg cartons that I'm using. Say you don't have that option. Maybe you are getting your eggs from a place where you always have to get a new egg carton and another new egg carton and another new egg carton and you don't have the option to reduce the number of egg cartons that you bring home. Well, that leads us to reuse. How can we reuse this egg carton? Hmm, I have some great ideas. Well, if you have cut open some delicata squash, for example, you could harvest the seeds. And with those seeds, after they've been dried for a day, you can sprinkle a little potting soil into your egg carton and put a seed in each one. After watering it a little bit every day, you might see some squash starting to grow. They like a sunny spot. Or maybe there's something else that you'd like to try, seeds from something else in your home. What a great way to experiment and reuse something that would have otherwise been clutter or added to the recycling system. Yes. What's another way we can reuse this? Well, this is a great time to think about our gratitude and about what we're thankful for. So with your art supplies, you can actually create a gratitude box. Think about someone that you're thankful for. Maybe it's someone that lives with you. Every time that you remember something that you're thankful for, you can put it inside of the gratitude box. For example, Thank you for helping me study. Oh, thank you for making dinner. Hmm, what's something you're thankful for? You can decorate your egg, your egg carton gratitude box. You can see I used some, um, some colored pencil shavings. I used some markers. I used some tape and some glue. You could even use this as a mailbox between you and the other people in your family. And at the end of the week, you can spend time together going through all of your gratitudes. What a great way to practice being thankful. Okay, we've talked about how we can reduce our waste at home by reusing an egg carton, by making it into a gratitude box. 
Next, we're gonna talk about sending a thank you card to somebody that doesn't live with us. So for this, what you'll need is an envelope or you can make your own out of some recycled paper. You'll also need some art supplies and some stamps. That's the one thing that we can't recreate from something else. I like to reuse an old calendar with beautiful pictures. These are great for cutting up and making a collage. Hmm, I found a picture I like. I can create a shape, that's an envelope. For a really simple envelope, you can fold it halfway and then cut a triangle off the top half. You can fold in the sides. Like that. And fold up the bottom. You can use glue or tape around the sides. I'm gonna use tape so we can see the different steps. And then I have my little envelope. When I'm ready, I just fold down the triangle and I can either glue or tape it closed. Hmm. This envelope is too small for the mail, but it's still fun to give thank you notes to people that you live with too. Let's see. I'm gonna write this note to my roommate. This one says, thank you for your sunny attitude. So it's to my roommate from me. There's my note. I'm gonna fold it up. Put it inside. And then glue it closed. You don't need a lot of glue, just a little. If you get a little glue on your fingers, that's okay. We can always wash our hands after. It's ready to go. Oh my goodness. I think my roommate's gonna feel really appreciated when they get this special gratitude note. If I wanted to send that in the mail, I would just start with a bigger piece or I could tape or glue together multiple pieces of paper. For this next letter, I think I'm gonna send a note to my aunt. She lives all the way in New York. So this letter is gonna need a stamp. Now I have this, I have this piece of paper here. It has different textures. I could cut that off, but I think it's kind of interesting. I'm gonna fold it in half. Hmm. Maybe for this note, When you're writing a note to somebody, it's nice to include their name so that they know that you're thinking about them. I also put a drawing. Maybe you can even draw something in your home that you notice. And on the inside, I think it's nice to include something that you appreciate about them. I also like to include a special wish for them. So this note says, Dear Aunt Carla, I love you. I appreciate talking to you on the phone. 
I hope you have a good day. Love, Risha. Our note is ready for an envelope. I'm gonna put it inside. And then I can either lick the envelope here, use a little bit of water or use a little bit of glue. And I wanna put my name and my address in the top corner. If I'm looking at the envelope, it's gonna be on the top left. What you need to write on your envelope is your first and last name, your street number and the street name, the town or city name, a comma, the state, and your zip code. So I would put my first and last name here, the number of my street and the name of my street. If you have a, a second part of your address, like an apartment number, that goes here too. And then the last line is the name of the town or the city where I live, a comma, the state, and the zip code. A lot of times the state is shortened to two letters. In California, it's C-A. Then in the middle and lower part of the envelope, you put the address of the person you're sending the thank you card to. You put their name, you put their street address, a second part of their address if they have one, like their apartment number, the town or city where they live, the abbreviation of their state, and the zip code. So here I made up an address for my Aunt Carla. I don't know if she'd want everyone to know her real address, so I'm just gonna make it up. It says Aunt Carla, 100 Wonderful Street, Apartment 2, New York, New York, 11235. <gasps> And the final step is to put a stamp. A lot of these stamps are very sticky, but only for a short time. So you wanna make sure you know which one you're gonna use and you put it in the upper right-hand corner. Make sure the whole stamp is on the envelope, otherwise it won't be able to send. If you're sending something really, really heavy, you might need to have two stamps. And as long as your envelope is flat enough to slide into a standard mailbox, it should be good with one envelope. So there you have it. Those are instructions for how to send a thank you card. I know that I'm somebody who loves to get mail, and I've noticed that people like to send mail if they get mail. So if you're somebody who likes to get mail, you can actually ask somebody to even be your, your mail buddy your pen pal. Well, friends, we've taken time to do a lot of different crafts together. We have learned how to start making observations in our own neighborhood, learn more about the history of our space, make maps that are special to our home and our neighborhood, pay close attention to the seasonality of the foods in our home, We've learned how to identify some of the plant parts, use our senses as we explore nature in our own kitchens. We have talked about reducing and reusing some of our household items before we recycle them. We've even talked about starting our own seeds inside of a egg carton. And we've also talked about making a gratitude mailbox inside our very own home. And we've learned how to make an envelope. We've learned how to address and send an envelope. There are so many other ways that we can be reminded that nature is everywhere. So I wanna encourage you at home to, to practice noticing, paying close attention. And I wanna thank you for spending this time with me. If you have other ideas or have adapted some of these crafts and recipes, we wanna hear about it. And if you're interested in finding out more about other classes that we offer in Classrooms for All, 
visit our website at www.ymcasf.org. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. Did you know that YMCA of San Francisco never closed? When shelter in place happened, we could no longer provide in-person programming. We quickly shifted to provide youth and family programming virtually. As early as April, we started providing on-demand activities in our YMCA of San Francisco YouTube channel. For this video, we're going to be making a geodesic dome. Today, we're going to be making a hovercraft. The science around this activity is really awesome. In addition, we have a regular schedule of activities for our youth and families to join live. We feature read-alouds, yoga, family Zumba, arts and crafts, drawing clubs, and more. So don't miss out on our virtual youth and family offerings. Visit www.ymcasf.org for more info and class schedules.